Hey there riders, let's talk Honda's new CL500. Have they cracked the code and realised a scrambler is the perfect midpoint between ADVs and road bikes? Or is this stylish machine a bit too boring for a real scrambler? Let me know what you think in the comments. Naturally, the CL500 is built on the Honda 500 parallel twin platform with some obvious shared DNA with the CMX500 Rebel in particular. However, this bike is taller, runs a dual purpose clad 19 slash 17 inch wheel combo and the telltale scrambler exhaust that suggests that river crossings aren't such a bad idea after all. Add fork gaiters, tall bars, an inviting 790mm seat height and the CL500 seems an accessible option for most most riders in a package that's slightly different to the CB500F, CBR500R, CB500X Adventure and that Rebel Cruiser. Will that be enough to draw sales away from the existing options and competition? Only time will tell, but more choice is always a good thing for us riders. So let's run through the specs. A parallel twin engine producing 34.3 kilowatts to stay under the A2 restrictions in Europe or 46 horsepower alongside 43.4 newton meters of torque. Naturally, it's a six speed with slip and assist clutch. This is a modern bike after all, and I've always found the Honda 500s fun to ride and capable of delivering the thrills in a no fuss manner that's ideal for new riders and will keep experienced riders who don't demand heaps of performance happy. There's a couple of special features like vanadium treated cam chain pins, striations on the piston skirts, phased crankshaft pins at 180 degrees, and a primary couple balancer behind the cylinders. Add balancer gears using scissor gears, a crank counterweight that keeps inertia low, and in and exhaust valves of 26 and 21.5 millimeters respectively. The crankcases are centrifugally cast thin-walled sleeves with a design to reduce 100 degree phased firing pumping from being an issue. What's all that mean? Realistically, it's a good thing that's more likely to be criticized for doing everything well enough that it's taken for granted. The tubular frame is matched to 41mm forks and preload adjustable rear shocks, so nothing earth shattering there, with it up to Honda to produce a setup that'll work in varied conditions for various weight riders. Whether the dual shocks perform better than the more common mono shocks we see now will be interesting, but meets the scrambler theme. A single 310mm front rotor gets a dual piston caliper and is linked to that 240mm rear rotor and single piston caliper combo, with ABS providing further backup. Not groundbreaking, but it can be argued that enough brake is probably better than too much on anything likely to be ridden off the tarmac by new riders. That light dual purpose rubber is a set of Dunlop mix tours run as a 110x80 front on the 19 inch rim and a 15070 on the 17 inch rear. Notably, Honda have retained the alloy wheels, aligning with a fairly light expectation of off-roading more suited to simple trails. Not that that's a bad thing, much of the appeal is just being able to get a little more adventurous where you might second guess yourself on a pure road machine, even if you probably could manage it. Tying into that is 155mm of ground clearance and 150 and 145mm of travel front and rear respectively, which measures in as a little more generous than your average road bike. Not significantly different to say the CB500 in clearance, however boasting 30 and 40mm more travel front and rear. With the exception of the CMX500, the CL500 also has the lowest Honda 500 seat height at 790mm, with non-cruiser motorcycles not generally getting all that much lower than this, and ensuring a wide variety of riders should feel comfortable on the CL, especially those new riders. The tall handlebar likewise offers a fairly upright and neutral seating position with wide upper body stance that'll feel commanding and maximise rider vision, confidence and control. Electronics are pretty basic however, no ride modes, no traction control, ABS is not cornering either, what we'd expect with a Honda 500 but possibly a sticking point for some riders. Arguably traction control can be a double edged sword on a scrambler however. The dash is also just an LCD, no TFT here, with full LED lighting all around and the ESS system which flashes the blinkers if it thinks you're doing an emergency braking manoeuvre. That'll boost visibility so it's hard to complain about. A 12 litre fuel tank, while not enormous, offers a range of over 300 kilometres, so well within reason, and at almost 28 kilometres per litre, the bike sips fairly meagerly. With Honda opting for a single disc brake on the front of the CL500, I'm kinda hoping this model slides in as the most affordable of the Honda 500s. I don't know if that's particularly realistic, but I reckon if Honda had managed to push the price down closer to the 400s, we'd probably be seeing far more of the existing 500s on the road than we already do. That may have sent Honda bust, 
but can you really put a price on a lifetime of brand loyalty? All up, I think the CL500 is an interesting addition to the range. The 500s sit in an interesting position themselves, well above the 400s in price, but not necessarily far off in performance, while well below most of the 650s. Although the old A2 restrictions even the playing field somewhat more in Europe than our LAM system does. Hopefully this will prove a success though, as I reckon the ADV craze is built upon people wanting do-it-all bikes, and the adventures just happen to look real good for that. And of course, for a bit of off-road exploring. That said, for many riders, a scrambler is probably a more ideal choice that will still fulfill all their riding needs in a more manageable package. But let me know if you think this will be a popular bike in 2023 and whether you'd consider one, whether you're a new or existing rider. And as always, stay safe out there. And if you're still here at this point, sub or hit that like button.